There are many differences between a habitat and a niche. A habitat is an ecosystem in which an organism lives, and a niche is the way that an organism uses its environment. It is said that a niche can define a species, because a bear, for example, would not be able to occupy the same exact territory as a bat. In fact, no two species can have the same niche. Otherwise, one will eventually outcompete the other to extinction. The two types of niches are the fundamental niche and the realized niche. To illustrate these two terms, let's look at a hare. It may have a fundamental niche that allows it to be widespread, say, in the state of Kansas. However, since its predator, the mountain lion, is common throughout mid Kansas, the hare chooses to live on the outskirts. For that reason, the hare will not be continuously distributed throughout its range. Populations are never static. They have changed greatly from when the earth was first formed. Evolution can occur in many different ways and produce an infinite amount of results. Chance mutations lead to variation, and natural selection sorts these variations between those who survive and those who die off. Over time, different modes of isolating mechanisms, such as allopatric, sympatric, peripatric, and peripatric speciation, can cause different variations to evolve independently, which leads to speciation. Eukaryotes experience dramatic reduction in relatedness with meiosis. A sexual mother would only be half related to their daughters, since the father's genes would also get passed down. As for prokaryotes, they are able to send DNA to another cell through conjugation, transduction, and transformation. This happens between species and genera and it leads to vast genetic rearrangements. It is easy then to see why identifying prokaryotic populations is very difficult. Sexual reproduction is a trade-off between having a huge number of babies and raising them to maturity. There is no such thing as a Darwinian devil, a species that can reproduce early, often and over a long period of time. For animals, the trade-offs for sex are territory, defense, mating, parental care, and attractive behavior. For plants, it is a bit different. Color displays, pollen, nectar, scents, and ultraviolet guides. For many animals, there has to be a trade-off between finding a mate and invading predators. Through the Sahavi Handicap Principle, handicapped males who still survive will be more likely to mate with females and will result in offspring with greater fitness. For example, the club-winged mannequin has modified wing bones that are able to make a mating call, but they have sacrificed their ability to fly away from predators. Animals use group formations to their survival advantage. In a group, animals are protected from being picked out by predators and more eyes can be used to watch out for and warn others of danger. Also, predators have an easier time catching their prey when hunting in groups. A member of a group also gains fitness by being a subordinate or helper for their relative's offspring. Examples can be found everywhere in the natural world, from plankton that slow their sinking by forming chains, to packs of wolves that take down larger prey. The best example of social structure might be the youth social system which is characterized by cooperative brood care, efficient labor, and a population that consists of overlapping generations. Ants, termites, bees, wasps, and mole rats have this social order, where queen is provided for by workers and produces all of the offspring in the colony.
Predators are animals that consume prey and they usually eat the entire prey. They serve to control populations of their prey, as shown by the Loch Covoltero predator prey model. A lynx, for example, will keep hare populations low with consumption as well as intimidation. Predators also have an effect on sexual reproduction, as they prefer to eat the commoner forms of prey and give rare forms mating opportunities. These forms will eventually become common and the cycle will continue. These types of creatures have many keen adaptations, camouflage, allure, venom, jaws, agile bodies, and strong muscles among other adaptations. There are active predators who search for their prey and ambush predators who lie in wait. There are mesopredators who consume herbivores and top predators who consume both mesopredators and herbivores. When humans take out predators such as sharks, lions, and bears, they affect the ecosystem balance.